Now let's continue refactoring this code to further differentiate between different types of entities. To do that, we're going to leverage a sealed class. Sealed classes allow us to define restricted class hierarchies. What this means is that we can define a set number of classes all extending a base type, but those classes will be the only ones that can extend that base type. So one example of this could be a loading state or a result state for a network operation. It's either going to succeed or fail, and there aren't really any other options. So in our case, we're going to create a sealed class with an easy, medium, hard, and help entity types. To start creating our sealed class hierarchy, we're first going to remove the properties from our entity class, as well as this existing override of the toString method. The next step is to add the sealed keyword before the class keyword in the entity class declaration. As soon as we do that, we'll start getting an error above where we try to create an instance of entity. This is because you can't instantiate based sealed class types directly. So this is now where we will create each type within our sealed class hierarchy. So the first type we're going to create is a data class to represent easy entities. And then we will add the properties we want, in this case, the ID and name. And then we wanna make sure that we inherit from entity. So next up, we can copy that and update the name for the medium type. And now for the third type, once again, we'll copy that. We'll name this hard, but now we're gonna add an additional property. This property will be called multiplier and will be a float. And this could represent some type of difficulty multiplier if we were creating a game, for example. Now notice that all of these types within the sealed class all extend from entity, but have different types of properties. This is one of the key differentiators between sealed classes and enum classes. With sealed classes, you can have different properties and methods on each of these type, and the compiler can perform smart casting to allow you to use these different properties and methods as you would like. We can also use different types of classes itself within our sealed class. So you notice that these are all created as data classes. However, if we wanted to remove data from one of these, that would be perfectly fine. We could also use object declarations within our sealed class hierarchy. So in this case, we'll create an object class called help to represent some type of generic static help entity within our program. Now, because help doesn't have a constructor because it's static, in this case, we can add a class body and we could add a name and add help directly. And in this case, we won't add ID since it's a singleton and there's only gonna ever be one instance anyways. Now that we have our sealed classes defined, we're gonna update our factory method to instantiate and return different types of entity classes. So we'll come up here to our return statement. And instead of returning an entity directly, we're going to use a when expression based on the entity type enum class. We'll then add all of the needed branches. And so when we have an easy type, we want to instantiate an instance of the easy class. So to do that, we'll type easy, and then we will pass an ID and name. And similarly for medium, we'll type entity.medium ID comma name. And now for hard, once again, we'll pass in entity dot hard ID name. But now again, we have this additional property type and the compiler recognizes that. So for now, we'll just pass in 2F as our multiplier. Now notice though that we have this help entity being unused. So let's update the factory to allow us to create instances of the help type. So we'll come up to our entity type enum class and add a help type here. Now notice as soon as we added that additional type on the entity type enum class, our when expressions warn to us that we need to add an additional branch. So to do that, I'll add 
the remaining branch here. And I'll default to type.getFormattedName. And once again, below here, I'll add the remaining branch. And in this case, I'm just going to return help directly. I'll notice here that help is giving us an error. It's saying required entity found entity.help. This is done to demonstrate what happens if you do not extend from the base entity type. So if we come down to our entity class here and notice our object declaration for help, if we then add a colon entity to extend from entity, we'll now see that error go away. So this is a good example of how the compiler can help give us this nice static type checking in all of these things. And if we are combining enum classes with sealed classes with these when expressions, it allows us to be sure that if we add a new type or a new branch somewhere that we have to handle that effectively because the compiler will warn us or even give errors if we're not handling all of those different branches. Now let's come down to our main function and demonstrate one of the advantages of representing our entities as a sealed class hierarchy. So if I remove everything but this first instance of creating an entity, I'm going to specifically add a type here of entity. Now we can come down here and use a when expression to do some type checking about the entity that we have just instantiated. So here I'll say val message equals when entity. And now again, we're going to rely on the IDE to add all the remaining branches. And so there's a few things of interest to note here. So we'll see that for easy, medium, and hard, it's adding this is check. So this is going to basically tell if it's an instance of that class or not. But then notice for the help class, because that's an object declaration and is a singleton, there's no need to have is. So in that case, we can reference that class directly. And so now here we could add whatever message we wanted. So we could say help class, easy class, medium class, and hard class. And then if we simply print that message out and run the code, we can see in this case, we're getting an easy class. And then if we change what we pass into our factory method and rerun this, we'll now see that we're getting the help class. So now we have static type checking both in specifying what type of entity we want back and in checking the type that we're actually getting back from that. And so we could use this to then call any methods or properties that are specific to that class. And if we were operating on these types, as in a when expression here, if we ever added a new type, the compiler would be sure to make sure that we handle the addition of that new type.